Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back. Here we are on episode nine. We're going to be talking about troubleshooting zone relays today. How are we doing, Dan? We're doing good. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. So today's topic uh, can get pretty time consuming real fast. I mean, you know, we'll try to keep this discussion as more of an overview. Listeners, if you're having issues, just give us a call because these things can get off in the weeds real fast. Absolutely. There's a, you know, a lot of different directions you can take this. I think we're going to do just an overview on troubleshooting today. Yeah. I mean, we get plenty of calls from contractors toward, usually towards the end of the day. Yeah, I was day. just going to ask you what time of day do you get those calls, Greg? It, it, I mean, it's all <laughs> times of the days, let's be honest. But it is. I mean, it seems the majority of them during heating season come in the end of the day. They've just got done with a tr- uh, with a replacement or yep, trying to get the heat going yeah trying to get the heat on and they throw the switch the homeowner standing there and things don't go the way they're supposed to lights go out and literally the heat is on yeah the, well the heat's on for them not for the customer that's right that's right <laughs> well we both been there boy that reminds me of a call i had last week yeah uh, there's a contractor out in minnesota he had uh, one of our zone valve relays our zvr boards sure and he was using our valves, and they were new valves, new board. Um, and he was calling me to confirm that our board had shorted out, and he needed to run to the supply house and pick up a warranty board um, and get that replaced. So uh, before I just gave him the nod and okay to run off and do that, I started asking him some questions and pushing him through some steps. And um, he tried resetting the power, and you know, the board wouldn't come back on. So I had him you know, initially disconnect all his thermostats and disconnect all his zone valve wiring. So it was just a plain board, no low voltage wires connected. And I had him reset the power and lo and behold, the board came on, the power light was on, board was working. Imagine that. Yeah. And that's, that's what we got to start off with, right? We got to eliminate the problem. You know, we want to be able to verify that it's the board or it's something outside the board. Yeah. So long story short with that, and we'll get into the troubleshooting side, as we started jumping out and testing the board um, and found out the board was working well, we started to reconnect the thermostats and all of them worked. They called for heat, lights came on, started reconnecting the zone valves. We got to the third zone and he reconnected that valve and tested it and boom, the board went out. Mm. You know, which then immediately he looked at the zone valve. Well, I must have a bad rel- or a bad actuator. Sure. It's a brand new cleffy actuator plugged in there. Boy. Um, so had him go down, disconnect the, the actuator, um, and ohm his wire out and he had a short at low voltage wire. Wow. Imagine that. Well, this, and this valve was located away from the control and had an existing low voltage wire in place. So he had used an existing wire only to find out that there was a short in the existing low voltage wire. Right. And we find that a lot, especially in change outs where either they never had a panel or or they did a a complete boiler upgrade, but you know, they've always had zone valves in remote locations in the past. And let's be honest, we're going to reuse the wiring if, if we can. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to save time time and save time, which saves cost. And you know, you already have a zone valve. So you replaced it. You put a new zone valve in, you put a new relay control in, but boy, you know, to string a new wire and you know, maybe you have to fish a wire somewhere. It's not that easy. So, you know, it's just a wire. Yeah. Why wouldn't I reuse it? Sure, why not? Why, you wouldn't think that would be a problem, but if it's an older home. Maybe it got rodent damaged. Who knows? I mean, anything can happen. All I know is in talking to him, he was pretty excited because he was ready to jump in his truck and run to the supply house and get a new board and come back and rewire the entire board, um, pull the old one out, put the new one in, and he'd, uh, he'd uh, hit the switch, started powering on the thermostats, and had the same problem. And we've had them calls. Oh, we? yeah. I'm on my third board, and it's still doing the same thing. Well, guess what? You know what? It probably isn't the board. Right. You know, I mean, weird things happen, but I doubt it's the board. So then you did the right thing. You you walked them through isolating everything off and kind of starting from scratch and going one component at a time. You, you think about it. In the time it would have taken him to 
get in his van, drive to the parts store or to the supply house, get a new board. He ha- he ran a new wire and everything worked and he was done. Yeah, looked like the hero. All done and heat was running. Right, and builds confidence with your customer. Certainly does. So ZVR boards, the valve boards, a lot more things going on there with thermostats, the pumps, and the, switches, and switches, and the valves themselves. Right, right. When we go from there to a ZSR, the, the pump relay, a lot more simplistic. Yeah, a lot simpler on the low voltage side. Yeah, it's thermostats. That's right. it. Right. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Sure. So, yeah, with that board, you're just bringing power in. Um, one thing nice about our boards, whether it's a ZVR or ZSR board, is that it has a transformer. So the ZSR is going to be built onto the board. It's going to be soldered onto the board. Yep. Where the ZVR is going to be exterior mounted in the cabinet, and it plugs in with a four-prong Molex plug into the board. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, and the nice part about the ZVR, too, is say you have multiple zones where you have multiple actuators getting wired into one zone, you can add some uh, some capacity expansion, yeah. Yeah, by, by installing that expansion transformer and plugging it into the factory setup of uh, Molex plugs there. Right, yeah, you can take it from the standard 40 VA transformer. On the ZVR 103 and 104. Right, yep, to the 80 VA. Yeah, and the ZVR 106 comes with 80 VA where the transformer comes with two of them ready to go. Right, but you know, you you get into the, you know some of the competitors, you know actuators where they have a real high VA draw for opening. Um, if you have those on a three or four zone panel with a forty VA transformer, you can easily add that expansion to get eighty VA um, and power those higher higher VA transformer or um, actuators. Sure. So, kind of getting back into some of the troubleshooting, um, maybe we slow it down a little bit and kind of pick that apart. Yeah, I think we should. So, number one, I think you want to locate the cause of the power loss, right? That's right. really what we had to sounds do. Sounds easy. Yeah, it sounds easy. It sounds real easy. But by isolating everything off, thermostats, zone valves, then you're plugging one component in at a time. However you want to do that, you can go one thermostat and one zone valve. So, start with zone one and start plugging them in. Make the call for heat. Right. If everything kicks on, pump runs, all that works well without overheating that that mov in there um we know that that zone's fine right so then we continue that process keep on going down the line until you have one that trips that thing out yeah well and that and that's an easy way to you know quickly find out what is causing the problem but if you're convinced it's the board that's causing the problem one nice thing i like to do you know once i get everything disconnected i like to you know I mean, ideally, I'd like you to have a meter and yes. go through and check your voltages at your thermostats, check your pumps, um, check your actuators, you know, your motor terminals for your actuators for voltage. Um, but you can make a simple jumper wire and run the board through its paces. Jump out the R&W at the thermostat, see if the light comes on and it calls. On a pump relay, see if you get 120 volts at those pump terminals. Right. If you had a valve relay, look for 24 volts at the pump, at the motor terminal. Yep, at the motor terminals. And then in order to verify that that part works, I mean, typically you're going to see a light on only when the end switch is made. Right. So you need an end switch or a jumper wire to jump out the end switch terminals of the board just to verify. And then, you know, it'll close the XX terminals for the boiler because that's just a dry contact. Right. And then it'll also send 120 volts to the system pump. Right. Yeah. And and that's one thing important to remember is that, you know, for you guys who use two wires own valves, you can use them with our boards. Yes. But you may notice that, okay, the thermostat light came on, my zone valve powered open, but boy, my pumps or my end switch aren't coming on. Yeah. Why? Is I'm that? sorry, pumps or um, pump. Yeah, yeah. Or end switch. The or, end switch light is not coming right. on. Right. Yep. Yeah, and then you don't get a, a end switch closure on XX in the upper upper right hand corner or upper right. left hand corner there, and you don't get uh, pumps energized. Right, and you w- you won't until it sees the end switch close. So that you know it's set up to where you know thermostat needs to call and the end switch for the actuator needs to close before that board will turn the boiler or pumps on. So if you have that two wire actuator, 
it's important to make sure you put a jumper in at your end switch terminals so that that board will go into the next step. Well, I think the biggest thing to remember is that we have that resettable link to protect that transformer. So, you know, if you if if you see that go out and you reset the power to the board and, and you see it doesn't come back on, it's kind of time to rewind. Yeah, it is. I agree. And that's that's a resettable fuse. Well, let's rewind a little bit. Let's kind of go back and talk about the the troubleshooting. Maybe we can kind of touch on the specifics of the of, of these boards. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't we start with the ZVR series? That's the the board that I just talked about from the tech call I shared. Right. That that's perfect. You know, we offer three different models of the ZVR: a three zone, the ZVR one hundred three; yep. a four zone, the ZVR one hundred four; and a six zone, the ZVR one hundred six. So that's going to take care of anything with zone actuators or zone valves. Right. Yeah. And we're not going to talk a lot about the details. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about troubleshooting, but just for knowledge, those boards can be all connected together to, you know, allow many boards to be added or unlimited amount of zones. Yeah. So, Um, but yeah, when you look at those boards, what's nice is that, you know, they have a transformer provided with them. So for a zone valve relay board, you're, you're, Valve actuators are going to be all powered on low voltage, 24 volts, so it has the the transformer with it. And actually, that transformer is externally mounted in the cabinet. It's not soldered onto the board. It plugs in with a four-prong Molex plug. Right. So the ZVR-103 and ZVR-104 come with a singular 40VA transformer, and you have the capability of plugging in an additional 40 VA transformer for those systems that have multiple actuators where maybe a 40 VA transformer isn't enough power to do it. Yeah. It's nice. We have a big cabinet that that board is enclosed in. It'll allow space to put that second transformer if you need that. Absolutely. So you can put 80 VA where the transformer, where the ZVR 106 automatically comes with two 40 VA transformers that you plug in when you get it installed and, and they're ready to go with 80 VA tr- of, of transformers. Right. Yeah. So you'll get you'll get power for your thermostats um, or your zone valves right from the onboard transformer. So all you really need to do for a power source is bring 120 volts into that board. Right. You know, from there, you know, it's great. You know, we have thermostat terminals for each of the zones. At the thermostat terminals, you know, you have your your R and your W terminal, and you also have your C, your common terminal for those power robbing or or smart thermostats. Right. So you can power those right off the board. Directly below them at the same zone location, you're going to have a location to wire in your zone valves. You're going to have two motor terminals and two switch terminals for end switch. Right. And that end switch has got to be wired, right? Definitely has to be wired. Yep. I, it's looking for that end switch to close for that board to go into the next step of its of its operation. Right, which would be energizing the XX terminal to bring on the boiler and then also powering the, the pumps through the relay. Right. So when you look at wiring, you guys are going to find that they're pretty simple to wire. The thermostat ties into the zone thermostat location. The corresponding valve ties into the valve location. You'll do that for zones one, two, three, or all the way through six, or as many zones as you have. Right. And the only time it really gets muddy, I think, is when you got somebody trying to wire in like an old Taco 570 series, the three wire that yep. sucks a lot of juice, um, or one of the weird like White Rogers four wire sure. that get wired totally different. And if you ever need help with wiring those, please call us. Call call in and we'll we'll get you through it. Yeah, we I mean we I know we have some wiring diagrams in our wiring guide that show how to tie those in, but we're always here as well. Um, so one nice feature as well is that you'll be able to tie in a system pump, a secondary pump, or a zone one pump right into that board. The zone one pump would be used if you're setting up a priority. It gives you the ability to to control a zone one as a pump versus a valve in a priority application, maybe for domestic hot water. Right. Provided you install the jumper in the end switch. Exactly. Yep. (laughs) That's for sure. (laughs) We get that an awful lot and they get everything down to the wire and everything's working, but that, Yep. well, I don't have a, I don't have an actuator on that. It's just the pump. Okay. All you need to do is slide that 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 piece piece of of two, two wire in there, a single wire in there and, and it, it works. Right. Yep. And then it'll give you, 
you know, your end switch to turn your boiler on. It gives you an auxiliary relay and a zone one end switch for like your modulating condensing boilers that might have a separate end switch call for domestic water. That's right. Uh, but when you look at troubleshooting, and that's what we're going to focus on today, you know, that board has a, a built in uh, resettable link that protects that transformer, protects the low voltage side. Provided you don't put too much juice through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. I, yeah. I've seen those. I've seen those get cooked before. Yeah, they do get cooked, and you wonder what they did to uh, to fry them. But it has to be a pretty bad short. Yeah, um, but so but that's exactly what it's there for. It's to protect the board in the event of a short. So you know, you guys, I, I shared that call about the contractor on site in Minnesota having that board short out. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about troubleshooting. So let's say you get it connected, you wire it up, and you have that that resettable link go out and take the transformer out what do you do then well i think i'm i'm going to start off with isolating all the low voltage components right off the board i'm taking the thermostats off and i'm taking the actuators off and probably unwiring the end switches because i mean that's another rabbit hole we can jump down we've had it where guys have wired the end switch to the motor and then pin pin that thing open which closes the switch and that's a direct short. Right, right. So we've seen that happen too. But but for all practical purposes, we're going to isolate all the components off. And then I'm going to start with plugging the transformer in, turning it on, making sure the light comes on. Nothing funny's happened. Okay, I'm going to wire that. Well, and that's the big key. You know, once, once you get all your low voltage wiring pulled off the board, and, I, and guys always, I can almost hear them cringe on the other end of the phone when I tell them, okay, well, you know, leave the power off to the board and disconnect all your low voltage wires. It's like, you know how much time I spent wiring this board, and now you want me to disconnect everything? We need to do it. You it's, do. Because you have so many different avenues of where that short could be. Right. So like Greg said, then reset the power to it, and if your green power light comes on, okay, that's a good sign. Yeah, then you start adding your your pieces of of the puzzle back together. Wire that thermostat in. Make sure the call for heat comes on. Wire the motor. Wire the end switch. Make sure that all comes on. If that's all good, you move on. Move on to the next zone and continue to do the same thing. You know, thermostat light comes on for zone two. You plug the motor in for the 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 zone valve, and all of a sudden the light goes off. All right. What do we have going on? Well, that's exactly what I had with that contractor in Minnesota. Right. Do we have a shorted wire? Do we have a miswired zone valve far away that we don't know about because something is wrong there? But you know, short. Yeah, you know, I get that question a lot with guys using thermoelectric actuators. Yeah, you know, especially you know, not not our brand, but you know, all, there's a lot of different brands out there. But I'll get calls from contractors with different brands, and you know, they give you four color wires. Yeah. Okay. Well, what what two are the end switch and what two are the motor? Yeah. Is it is it yellow and red? I mean, right. It, well, I've it, had I've had guys wire them wrong where they wire the end switch to the motor terminals and the motor terminals to the end switch, and then the board doesn't do any, and then it doesn't do anything. But it doesn't sure. short the board out either. No, because that actuator is is right now closed, closed. and the switch is open, so it just sits there. Right. Right. So, you know that. Yeah, I find myself a lot of times then exploring the other manufacturer's zone valve and helping them. Right. It's just part of what we do. Part help of what help we do. you figure out which wires are actually the end switch because yeah. when we get off the tech call, we want you we want that board working. Absolutely. Yeah, so it really boils down to isolating the individual components out and going through it one step at a time. Now you can test this with a meter too. I mean, that's honestly if you want to get good with your meter learn how things, how voltage travels when everything is working. You know, you test between R and W on a call for heat, you're not going to read 24 volts because no. it's a closed circuit. Right. You go between R and common, no matter what, you should read voltage. What about W and common, Greg? W and common on a call for heat, you just completed the circuit. So now you're going to read your low voltage, 24 to 28 volts. Right. What about on call that on a no call for heat? No call for heat, W to common. You should read zero volts. Yep, absolutely. All right. It's a good way to test if your thermostat's actually calling. Yeah. Because I've had guys that have done that. Well, I just turned my thermostat to heat, and it's not calling. Well, a lot of the thermostats will have um, delays built into them. They do. 
So if you, if you turn your thermostat on and you go back to your board and it's not calling and you check between R and C and you have 24 volts and you're checking W to C and you don't, well, that tells you that thermostat's not completing the circuit to tell that board to come on. So you either have to wait through the delay um, or find out what's going on in the thermostat that didn't complete that. Yeah, maybe the wire's not hooked up or thermostat's in a delay or sure, who knows what. Right. There's so many different ways it could be. Yeah. And that's what makes this daunting. Yeah, well, the yeah, it, it is. And, you know, that's where trying to determine is it a thermostat issue, is it an actuator issue, is it, is it a board issue, is it a piece of wire? You sure. Know, I've seen new thermostat wire come off the roll and be shorted internally. Yeah, and honestly, I there's one manufacturer, maybe a couple of them out there, of thermostat wire, like they have that strip string. And if you pull hard on that strip string and all of a sudden it binds, guess what you're doing in there? You're actually skinning the wire off. Yep. And I had some not long ago where I did that. And I stripped it all the way down. I think I stripped it about two feet in. And here, three of the wires had been skinned. And if I would have applied any power, they would have shorted. Right. So just kind of let that be a lesson to you. It doesn't take much. No, no, it certainly doesn't. So I think we've covered the the ZVR pretty well. We also have the ZSR, the pump panel out there. Right, yeah. that, That board is designed for separating zoning with pumps. Right. There's thermostats and pumps. Yep, thermostats and pumps. There's no valves. There's nothing extra in there. And that one's pretty simple, really. It is pretty simple. I mean, we do have three different transformer sizes depending on what size board you have. You know, that comes in the three, the four, or the six zone option. But then we also have a smaller single zone option for a single pump switching, really. Yeah, so we have the ZSR-101 single zone, the ZSR-103 three zone, and ZSR-104 four zone and a ZSR 106 six zone. Correct. Yep. And all three of those will have different, well, three of three of those will have different transformer sizes. Sure. Yeah. So those transformers are going to be soldered into the board. Um, They're not externally mounted and plugged in like the ZVR series. So uh, those are soldered directly onto the board, but they still have that resettable link protection like the, like the other board has. Right. So if you have a, a quick little short, It'll open up, lights will go off. It basically go through and do the same thing. You right. isolate your thermostats off. That's the only low voltage. Um, yeah, because that link is really only protecting you on your low voltage side. Right. It, so it, it's going to open up when there's a low voltage short. And then from there, it disconnect power, disconnect all your thermostats, repower it up. If the green light comes on, you have power. You know the board's still okay. So, yeah, so then you're going to go back and plug in your thermostats one at a time and see what happens. Right. You know? Yeah. Sooner or later, you're going to find that issue. You are. And if one is giving you one in particular is giving you fits, then that is where you break out the ohmmeter and start testing for continuity between your wires, your thermostat right. wires. Checking your thermostat wires. Yep. And most of the time we see a problem on, on three wire, not too often on, on two wire, but it, it could happen. You know, if you got, say, the R or the W wire, you notice the thermostat works fine until you make a call for heat, and then all of a sudden the board goes out, chances are that short might be in that W wire somewhere. Well, and and that could. I mean, if you're not running a common to your thermostat and you're only running a two wire, that could be a reason why your board's not shutting off. Yeah. Because if you have have that wire stripped inside the, the cabling, you know, that's giving you a constant call for heat. So if you get to a point where, hey, you know what? I only have a two-wire thermostat. I don't even have the thermostat on the wall. I have the wires separated up at the wall, and my board is continuing to call for heat. Well, that's a pretty good sign that, you know, your wiring, there's something shorted in the in the wiring. Yeah, it's skinned apart, and it's touching and some places. And the good thing sure. is that's not going to take the board out. It's not going to take that resettable link out because it's not a short. Right. It's just going to give you a continuous call for heat. Exactly. And then when you get to the high voltage side of that board, we have protection there as well. Yeah. In the in all the ZSR boards, they all have a pump fuse that's replaceable. Right. Yep. And we include a couple extra fuses with the board, so you'll have a couple extra in the cabinet. Sure. Um, but, yeah, fuse protection for each of the pumps and the system pump. Right. And those are good up to 5 amps. Right. Yeah, so that should cover any of your your modern pumps. Yeah, I would say so. 
Well, Greg, I think we did a pretty good job of covering both product series and the troubleshooting side. Um, so I'm looking forward to coming back next week. What are we going to talk about? Yeah, so tune in next week to episode 10. And uh, basically, we're going to go over what you need to know about scald protection. Yeah, go back to a plumbing topic. I like that. Sounds like a plan. Great. Well, see you guys next week. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.